So have you gone to this club in London, East London, Dalston, uh, with your friend Lauren? It was her 22nd birthday. Yep. You were just in the club. It was everyone's having a good time. You were all partying. You knew that this guy was there with a few of the TOWIE brigade. What, what was the mood like in the club leading up to this? Yeah, everyone was enjoying themselves, having fun, getting on with a normal night out, as you would expect, just dancing, chatting. Just everything was normal. There was nothing to indicate that any accidents were going to happen. And what, what happened when the attack was launched? What's your memory of it? Um, so I was sat down on my chair and it hit me in the face very strongly and the sting and the pain um, felt like my face was on fire. It actually knocked me backwards off my chair. I moved so fast, I fell off my chair backwards um, and I didn't take in anything that was going on around me. I was so focused, I thought I was going to be like on fire. Well, I felt like I was on fire. And because it smelt so strongly of petrol, to start with, I thought that somebody was going to set um, the club on fire um, because there was such a fear of panic. What did you think was happening? Um, I'm, I don't really know. I was so shocked and scared. I didn't get a chance to really think. Mm. I was so focusing on cooling my face down and all I wanted to do was stop the burning because it was it was. What, what did it feel agonizing. like? I mean, describe that sensation. Um... I guess it's a pain I can't actually describe. It just burned. It was on fire. Um, and you just wanted to stop it and you just couldn't. You just couldn't. There was no stopping it. What were you able to do at that moment, not knowing what had happened, where this had come from? What were you able to do to relieve I, the pain? Um, I sat on the floor for quite some time because I couldn't see because it got me in my left eye. Mm. Um, so somebody lifted me up and kind of took me to the bathroom mm. and we filled up the sinks with water and we put the plugs in and just held our faces in the bowls of, well, in the sinks of water. Um, and that, because it was nice and cold, it felt very nice, mm. um, but it still was burning. And it took quite a long time for the ambulance to get there and nobody kind of had any idea what to do. No. Some people were saying it's a great idea to put your face in water. Some people were saying it really doesn't, mm. won't help. And it was like, ah, oh, what do we do for the best? You What's had no help? idea what the best thing to do was? No. And your friend had also been hit. Yep. Lauren, another friend couldn't even look at you. I mean, what was that moment like for you, to hear that? Um, it was very difficult. It was very hard. Um, obviously, I had seen what I looked like in the mirror and I was already very upset. And there was girls walking in the toilets and their reactions were like, oh, my gosh. Um, and then for my friends to actually say it to me as well, it was very difficult. But, um, yeah, it was very hard. It's obvious that even now, all this time later, it's incredibly traumatic yep. for you to relive what happened. In terms of, of long, longer term damage to you and injuries, yep. what is your current state? Um, I've got a scar on my shoulder which won't leave me. It's a risen purpley scar, mm. um, which they're trying to as much as possible to just because the skin's not flat, as it's quite bumpy. Mm. They're just trying to make it smooth, but. Um, they can't guarantee that it will go, so I'm, it might be with me. You forever. were hit on the face. I mean, how are those scars healing? Um, they've got so much better. They've focused on my face mm. so much, and like the treatment I've had has been phenomenal. Mm. Um, I've got two little scars that are kind of in the creases mm. of my face, um, but every time I look in the mirror, although people can't see them, I can because mm. I know what is there. I mean, for this guy, he's been now being convicted, and we're waiting for the sentencing. But what are your thoughts about somebody? that could do something like this indiscriminately in the middle of a busy nightclub? Um, I don't really know. I think he's... A sw I, I don't know how to answer that question. There's no words. No, he's just... I'm pleased that he's going to be off the streets and he's going to go down for a very long time. We're seeing, Sophie, a lot more of these acid attacks. It's yeah. becoming a new thing, which is terrifying because I don't think people have any concept of how horrendous this acid is even in tiny quantities what is your message to people out there who might be tempted to take some acid to a club or to use it to attack people um, I, message I would hope that people wouldn't do it at all I think it's a very cowardly thing to do um, because it's so easily done and you can throw it and run um, and you can ruin a life in seconds um, if you catch somebody in the eyes and their sight goes and their face. Mm. You just don't understand how that is going to impact their life. And unless you've had it happen to you, I really don't think that you will ever understand how it hurts. I'm told, I'm told Sophie, that even getting in a car when you smell petrol now, even yeah. that 
yeah. is traumatic for you because it reminds you of that smell yeah. when the acid was thrown on you. So for a period of time, I couldn't go and fuel up my own car because I was like, having panic attacks, smelling the smell. Um, I've had lots of counselling. I still am having counselling. Um, so gradually, it's like it's getting easier, but it will never go. I will always still remember that. Can you imagine even going out to a similar club again? Um, I can, because I'm not going to let it stop my life. Mm. Um, I've, I've got amazing friends and amazing family, and they've been so supportive. And I've been back out in Bournemouth, where we live, um, but it's nowhere near as busy as London, and going out in London does scare me. Um, I just think I am going to have to get over it, because I'm not going to let it stop my life. I will continue mm -hmm. to be as I was. Good for you, Sophie. I you mean... know what, Sophie, you're a very courageous young woman. It's not easy to come on a programme like this and talk about something so disgusting. You know, and I'm just so pleased for you that these injuries mm. are not a lot more serious. They could have been. You yeah. could have been blinded. Mm. You could have had horrific facial damage, couldn't you? For the first few weeks, I couldn't see out of my left eye. And that was also very scary, because when the doctor actually said... When they covered one of my eyes and I couldn't see out the other one, it was like my whole world mm. had fallen apart, because mm. I was blinded for a certain amount of time. Mm. And I'm just so grateful and lucky that it's come back. Well, I think that mm. everybody watching this programme is supporting you and our hearts go out to you because of what you've been through. It's incredibly brave of you to talk with us this morning. We really appreciate it.